Hi there, my name is Stephanie Schweiger, and I'm a project geologist at Sequent, and I'm going to walk you through declustering structural data in LeapFrog today. With so much closely spaced structural data, now is a great time to demonstrate this declustering tool in LeapFrog. Some methods of measuring planar rock features can produce overwhelmingly large data sets. There are automatic tools that can oversample structures either by scanning the same feature multiple times or simply by sampling at intervals that are very small considering the regional scale. The declustering tool in LeapFrog makes it easier to handle these large, complex structural data sets. Any planar structural data set can be thinned to a manageable size while retaining representative samples across the data set based on range and angle tolerance parameters that you can set. How do we set this up? We are going to go to our structural modeling folder and right click on it. And we are going to select new declustered structural data. You're going to change the source table to whichever structures you would like to decluster. And then we just need to set up these parameters. The first is the spatial search radius. Spatial search radius defines the distance over which measurements are grouped into clusters. This distance is whatever units your project is in, so in this case it is 1 meter. One representative measurement is kept per cluster, so in this case in 1 meter we will get one representative sample. The representative measurement that is kept for that cluster is the structural measurement that is closest to the mean. And the angular tolerance, the parameter beneath that, is used to discard outliers from the calculation of the mean. So in this case I've said anything outside of 5 degrees will be discarded from the calculation of the mean. And then we have the priority column over here. If a priority column is selected, this will change the weighting of each measurement when calculating the mean, preferentially keeping measurements with a higher level of confidence. To be used, the confidence or priority column must be imported as a numeric data type. Finally, below we have the Select Category Columns section. This allows you to essentially decluster separately between different types of measurements. If you'd rather decluster maybe bedding structures with different parameters than your foliation or crenulation or joints, then that can be done within this Select Category Column section. And then I can just click OK. And that's going to produce my declustered structures. I pull that into the scene, and I flicker on and off my structures. I can see the difference between my declustered data set and my original data set. We can see here that this allows me to remove redundant measurements or noisy outliers from my structural data. Another thing just to note about these declustered structures is that if you click the little arrow to expand the declustered table in the project tree, you'll notice our structures table is directly hyperlinked here. Clicking on the hyperlink will direct you back to the source data table, making this declustering tool very traceable and very auditable. And if I'm viewing my original structural data table in the scene, I can navigate to the properties panel in the bottom right corner. In the query filter menu, you'll notice that I can view my declustered data as a query upon my structural data table, since the declustering tool is just querying our source table anyways. Thank you so much for watching this video and happy modeling.